Good evening, January 9th, 2014, pages 265 to 274. I've been a little long-winded in the last couple ones. I want to keep these to five minutes, so I'm really going to try to uh, limit my talking tonight to keep this to five minutes for you, like I hope to in the future. So we'll jump right into key vocabulary terms for this reading section. There's not too many. Um, we've got iconic and echoic memory. Iconic memories are memories that we see. They're memories that we see. Um, uh, something visual. It's like a picture, a picture memory. Um, it doesn't last any more than a few tenths of a second. So, for instance, you might have seen a flash of lightning, and you remember that, and you you have that. If you read that memory, that sense that you see that picture of lightning in your in your mind's eye, and then it immediately goes away. Uh, that's iconic memory. It's something that's like a it's like a picture. It lasts. If you if your mind chooses to do something with that, to process it, further processes it, then it'll last you know much longer than a tenth of a second. But it's something that your brain sees it. It holds it in there for a tenth of a second, and then it lets it go. Because like we mentioned uh, in the past few days, your brain's taking in thousands of pieces of information every second, and so it can't possibly deal with everything. And so it takes it in, remembers it, and lets it go. It's kind of just, it's kind of like a, a person in, uh, maybe working like a, in like a packing shed, a fruit packing shed. They're constantly looking, they're just looking at tons, hundreds, and thousands of different pieces of fruit. And they're looking at those fruit, and they look at the piece of fruit for a fraction of a second, and they move on to the next piece. If there's a piece of fruit that catches their eye that they need to get rid of, then they uh, focus their attention on that. Uh, a coic memory is the same thing, but we it's a sound, it's a hearing, it's a thing that, and this one lasts about three to four seconds. This one lasts about three to four seconds. This one's like a, you know, a tenth of a second. And this one's three to four seconds, a coic memory. And those are sounds that we have heard. Um, kind of like <clears throat> yesterday we talked about visual encoding and uh, audit, uh, auditory encoding and then semantic encoding auditory and then semantic encoding this one was the least effective this one was the second best and this one was the star um, iconic memory is the least remembered what we see a coic memory we remember a little bit better and then those things that have this really personal or um, strongly emotional meanings to us are the things we remember for a lot which jumps right down here to this flashbulb memory. This is what we talked about in class. Um, I asked on the first day, um, when I was asking you the true or false questions, um, most people don't have a photographic, a type of photographic memory. We all do, and that's called flashbulb memory. That's that photographic flashbulb memory that you guys have for highly emotional events. Um, I mentioned 9-11. If you were a big Michael Jackson fan, the day that Michael Jackson died would be a highly emotional event. Um, Princess Diana, um, whoever it was highly, uh, you know, Pope John Paul II, if I think you guys were probably too young for that uh, even now, but that was highly emotional for a lot of Catholics. And so those types of events are things that you'll remember. Um, another thing that we have here is this thing, long term. Okay, it doesn't work right now. Long-term potentiation, long-term potentiation, or LTP for short. Uh, a lot of students have trouble with this one. Um, your little neuron, okay, so the neurons, there's this little synaptic gap right here. Your neurons are just little nerve fibers, okay, and the way they communicate is they send little signals zzz, across to each other, and that's how they communicate. We learn a lot more about this in the next unit. Well, when you're learning something new, these, sig these neurons start saying zzz, 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 a whole bunch of different signals all at once. And they're like um, creating this roadway, this neural roadway between these two neurons. And that process of creating that roadway is called long-term potentiation. 
one of the ways I kind of visualize it is uh, somebody trying to create a new road. And so say you're out in the wilderness or you were, you know, you were an early American pioneer and you were trying to build a road from one town to the next. Well, there might be grass on the road. There might be weeds in the road. There might be trees in the road. But the more you travel on that road or maybe you're taking a shortcut to school or whatever through a field, the more you travel on it, the more trampled down it becomes and the easier it becomes to go through. That's long-term potentiation. Well, the better we learn something, the more those neurons fire and the better they beat down that road and make it easier next time for the neuron to travel or the uh, impulse to travel through. And the easier it is to travel, the easier it is to remember. So that's long-term potentiation there. Um, and then finally, we got two more, um, implicit and explicit memories. Now, these ones are... I. Well, you guys better take a few seconds on this one because implicit memory and an explicit memory both have like multiple names. Implicit has actually got three names that you might see around. It's called implicit memory. You might also see it referred to as non-declarative memory or you might also see it referred to as procedural memory. Now, we usually refer to these types of memories with people with amnesia. People with amnesia lost their memory uh, in some way. We'll talk about different types of amnesia later, but they lost their memory in some way. Implicit memory is the ability to learn how to do something, how to do something, or the procedure to do something. So for instance, if I want to know how to ride my bike, I might know how to ride my bike, but I might not be able to tell you what to do. If you ask me, well, how do you do it? I might not be able to tell you how I did it or describe to you the steps that it took to do it, but I knew just instinctively how or the procedure it took to ride my bike. I know sometimes you guys, like tying your shoe maybe, if I ask you how do you tie your shoe, a lot of you know how to tie your shoe. You have this implicit memory of how you're supposed to tie your shoe, but you can't explain to me or declare to me how you tie your shoe. That ability to declare the information to um, to give it step by step is your explicit memory. So your explicit memory is declaring. You can declare a fact. You know you can declare the steps to tie your shoes. You know why or what and exactly how to do something. That's explicit. You can explicitly say it. You can say it out loud without any problem. Implicit. Implicit is refers to something that. You know it's there, but you don't really see it, but you know it's there. Like you implicitly think that um, you, when you're a little kid, you implicitly think that all adults know everything or they know a, a, a lot, right? It's just there's not a sign there in front of every adult that says, I know more than this guy. You just implicitly think that. Um, so implicitly how to do something, okay? Non-declarative because you don't have to declare it. You don't have to tell me how you ride your bike. You don't have to tell me how you tie your shoes. You can just do it. Or we oftentimes call it procedural because it's we know what to do. The steps to do it, we just don't know how to describe it. Explicit is like the second level. This is oftentimes when people have amnesia, they have problems with explicit memory. They might know how to do something, but they can't explain how. Um, that's all the vocabulary terms for this unit. Uh, that we're going to go over. I'm sorry for this section that we're going to go over. And uh, today's Thursday, so uh, tomorrow we got last vocab quiz and some reading over the weekend. And you guys will be done with your first week. So congratulations, and we'll see you next time.